heels of the house on the hillside that old looked like so and it seems I like when I'm tossed about But I learned through the scriptures there come a time when you have to get off the defense. Anybody hear me? And you have to be on the offense. When you get on the offense, sometimes you find out how much power you really got. You see how much ability you really have when you make it up in your mind that you will purposely try to achieve. You will willfully give it your best with no excuses. And you'll be surprised as to how many spirits will back off when you get on the offense. Jesus allowed the world to batter him and to scorn him. But every time he'd go into a place and an unclean spirit would try, would cry out, he'd get on the offering, all the real peace and them devils would shut up. I feel the virtue. There come a time in life when we have to know how to turn the battle around and stop sitting up there being attacked and get on the spiritual offense. Realizing who you are and the power that's in you. Now, if greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, then why do we always allow the enemy to badger us? Why would we always allow the enemy uh, to, to depress us and to oppress us? Why is it that, amen, we give so many testimonies of how the devil is overpowering us when greater is he that is in you than he, I feel the virtue, than he that is in the world? You see, we got it all mixed up. There's no way in the scripture where it says you have to let the devil beat you down. When the Bible says that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. The Bible says that this faith that we have have overcome the world because he has overcome the world. I tell you that it is time for the church to get off the offense. Amen. You don't have to get indignant. You don't have to lose your integrity. You don't have to give in God to put your foot down against an unclean spirit. But you can make a stand in the Holy Ghost by walking up right before God, speaking up right before God, amen, repenting of your past failures and walking in the blood of Jesus Christ, and you can make a stand. And believe me, when you start putting your foot down and making an offensive stand in the Holy Ghost, you'll see people begin to react differently. Because sometimes people can look at you and see that greater is he that is in you than in them. They can look at you and see that you are even a better person. But if you don't know, they'll take advantage of your ignorance. But the minute you come to grips with you and the God that's inside of you, and you realize that, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've got more for me than against me. And you begin to change your frame of thinking. It's like, amen, you, you're giving, you're a cashier and you're giving change to someone, you're giving them too much change, but they're not honest. And they see you giving, I feel the virtue. They see you giving them too much money, but they're not going to give it back. Because if you don't know it, that's your loss. That's how the enemy is. The devil is sometimes. You're giving them too much change, and you don't realize, hey man, what he sees. You got more power. This individual can at any time walk out of this trial. But they don't see it. And the devil says, I'm not going to tell you. You have to get on the offense. Paul said he's striving for the prize of the high calling. Is that right? That means he's on the offense. He said when you run a race, you run to win. David had to learn that. David had to learn that. You see, a lot of us know how to take the pain. We know how to go through the trial. But we don't know how to reverse that thing. 
and walk in the offense. David, when he had sinned, he was on the defense. His own children tried to destroy him and he ran. King Saul, before he even sinned, King Saul tried to destroy him out of envy and strife. Though David had the anointing, he ran. He was on the defense. He didn't want to engage in battle. It's a lot of things that causes us to get on the defense. Sometimes when things come against us and people come against us because of the sin battles we have had, we feel like we don't have a right to make a stand. But once you have been purged from that sin, once you have been delivered from that sin, you never, you no longer have a charge for it. Yes, sir. Now, there are some consequences you might have had to pay, but you served the time. And that's one of the biggest things the devil gets us with. Try to haunt your mind about the way you used to be. Well, if you truly delivered, then we need to learn not to let that thing bother us. If you truly been delivered. I remember a positive speaker by the name of, uh, mm, I, I forget his name right off, Zed, Zed Zingler, Zingler, or Zingler, some of you might have heard of him. He was 400 pounds, six foot something. And he decided that he was going to lose that weight. Very good speaker. And he was losing it. And one day he was in the supermarket and there was a little boy with his mama. And the little boy said, Mommy, look at that big old man. And everybody started looking around and he started looking around for the man. But it was him. But because he made up in his mind, I'm not going to accept myself in this condition, he no longer saw himself as a big old man. But he saw himself as a man who was conditioning his body. And when the boy said it, he actually started looking around for the big old man. Because now in his mind, that's no longer him. So when people come up to you and try to point the finger at your past sin, if you truly have been delivered, when they call it out, you look around to see what they're talking about. Hallelujah. Because that's no longer you if you've been delivered. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. If you've been truly delivered by the grace of God, then you should not be living and mad in the guilt of the past. If you've been proud and clean by the power of the land, as a trick of the devil. And so many times we allow the devil to close our mouth when we forget the forgiving power of God. The greatest, one of the greatest preachers in the world denied the Lord twice. Oh, but when he came around again, when the time came again, amen, Peter said, hold on a minute, I'm not going to die, deny him again. I'm ready to die. Paul, they wrote half the New Testament, beat and caused havoc over the whole church, killed people thinking that they, he was doing God a service, killed Christians. But when he was converted, everywhere he went, he would beat. He said, I glorify God in my infirmities. I can take the pain. I gave it. He said, I can take it. He prayed. God said his grace was sufficient. You've got to listen. Nobody can live or go forward around people that's always trying to throw their past at them. Sometimes you have to, I call it, you have to pull the hustler's move. When I was a nightclub entertainer, we had a singer called his name Bird. Nice looking man, but he was also a swinger. And one time he, he was getting married. But one of his girlfriends came into the club that he had met. And when the girlfriend came and saw that he was with his newly wife, she sat by herself. And I was a little younger, so I saw what was happening. So I just politely went over to her and said, would you like to have a dance? Nothing funny, just trying to cover the player's back. Had a little dance and then she left. But I looked at Bird. When the girl looked at him, I called this the player's move. Yeah, like you can see it. I said, man, that guy is really smooth. Because he was much older than me. I couldn't believe it. And she worked for the social, social welfare service. I remember one day going there for a job and she remembered me. And she called me and said, do you have a job? And I knew she was calling because she remembered me. But I said, yes, ma'am, I, I got a job. And she tried the whole conversation, but I cut it. Because I wasn't interested in her, you see. I was only trying to help the play out, but I felt sorry for her. But I knew why she was calling back, because she remembered my face, you see. But I cut that, because that wasn't my cup of tea. But he just, and so I learned, 
that when you've gone through your trials and God has brought you out, you have ignorant people who are caught up in sin themselves, but because you don't know they sin, they act like they ain't got none. Uh, they start, when they start trying to throw things at you, and you know you've been delivered, you know God has cleansed you, sometimes you've got to give them the hustler's move. Act like you don't see them. Amen. Keep on doing for Jesus. Yes, Lord. And you know when you... Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. That man walk around like he ain't did nothing. <laughs> give them the hustler's look because they're ignorant. They're not rejoicing because God has brought you out. Yes, Lord. But because of enemy and strife, they try to bring you in and bring you down. I feel the virtue. It's the enemy that's the accuser of the brethren. So you have to learn when God forgives you. It may hurt, but thank God. Learn from it. He chastened those whom he loved. Learn to leave it under the blood. And then you walk with the newness of life. You don't have to convince folks you've been changed. Just walk in that change. Walk in it. You don't have to throw real for real. Walk in that chain. Now, this is very important that you give them that hustler look and go on about your business and keep living for God because they all life will speak for itself. Everybody hear what I'm saying? When you're dealing with hypocrites, don't worry about it because they all life will speak for themselves. Now, you might never know about it because they're not going to take it. You see? But you just go ahead and do what you know is right. And so David, after he became king and uh, he sinned with Bathsheba, a uh, king that came to his home. And his famous son tried to kill him. David ran. He went to secure his dad and mom. He took everybody and he left. And he fled. Because he felt shame of what he did. And he knew that the judgment that was coming into his home, part of it was because of him. And, and I know that sometimes you may feel bad because you may have caused problems for other people and your sins may have led to other things. But listen, you got to repent, they got to repent and forgive just like you do. And sometimes there's nothing you can do but really say you're sorry and mean it. And take the chastisement that God has for you. And many times, I probably in our life, sometimes we did some things we wish we never would have done. I've done some things in my younger, my young adult life that I wish in the church and out. I wish I'd never done it, but I can't change it. But I can change my heart. I can't change it, and the pain still hurts sometimes. But I can use that pain to make me a better person. You see, when you really feel bad about doing something, and you really feel bad about it, uh, the Holy Ghost is upon me, and you seek forgiveness, if you really feel bad about it, that's one thing for sure you're not going to do, and that's do it to somebody else. <laughs> because you really feel bad about it. I feel the virtue. You, you're not going to do it. You've been abused, and you really felt bad about being abused. You didn't like it. You're not going to abuse other folks. You were bullied and picked on and, and you didn't like that. You're not gonna, if you really felt bad about it, you're not going to grow up and bully other people. Why would you do to others that you didn't want people doing to you if you really felt bad about it? And sometimes we feel bad about the things we go through that we think we're going to go ahead and give into other people's sins. Oh, head of the household, I found out that ain't true. Man, if you have sinned, don't give your family license to sin. You still tell them that ain't right. Still tell your children, parents, that ain't right. Don't say that I did it, you can do it. Because if it ain't helped you, what makes you think it's going to help you? You see, surely, if we're living a life of sin, we, not, we might not be in the predicament to judge anybody, but you can protect people and get the same results. The Lord taught me that. As a young minister coming up, going through some things, I didn't, I, I wasn't been fit to judge, so how am I going to help rule the church? He said, you can protect and get the same results. You're not fit to judge anybody. So don't judge anybody, but protect them that are innocent from them doing wrong. So now I'm only stopping you from doing wrong. I ain't judging you, but I'm telling you, you can't leave this person alone. You can't do that. I'm not judging you, but I, I'm stopping you from doing wrong. Until you get your life right, then you can get back into the position whereby you can discern right from wrong. Once you get the most out your eye, you understand? So, so remember, you're going through something and yet there are people around you that need advice and they know your life and they quite right. You can't judge them, but you can't show protect. Try to protect them from themselves, which is giving the same advice. you get the same result. If you're trying to protect the innocent from the evil, if the evil doesn't want to stop, then they have to go. You ain't judging. You just say, hey, this, this can't be. But you haven't judged anyone because you're not in a position to. 
But once you get the moat out of your eye, you can't say, well, there was a time when I couldn't do it, but you can now. And you need to learn to walk in your deliverance. But because of what you go through, you should be able to do it with humility and with the right spirit. Anybody hear me? Well, David, because he said, God said that the sword would not leave your house. One son raped a sister. Her brother killed him. Another son took ten of his wife and tried to kill David. And David took all of this because he felt like if I had never touched that woman, then this stuff would have never happened. He felt like it was his fault. But remember this. A lot of things may be your fault. Amen. But you can't blame yourself for everybody else's actions. Because everybody has to be tried for themselves. 